וידבר השם אל משה ואל אהרון לאמור, איש אל דיגלוי באוסס לבי סבויסון. Each man will be according to his banner, according to his, his family. Yachan no Bnei Yisrael, they will encamp Bnei Yisrael in the desert, meneged soviv lo ol moed, Yachan no, around the, the ol moed, around the tent of meeting. This idea of a degel, discussion, Rishenim, Yachrenim, whether or not there were in fact uh, four Degolim, and there were three tribes uh, that came together for each Degel, for each banner, or there were also individual Degalim banners for each particular tribe. The Ababinel brings the, the first pshat, and he, he, he mentions the second pshat as well, the second possibility. B'sham Shanafal Hirsch talks about the, each tribe had its degel as well. But there seems to be something at work over here, that the idea of a degel is some kind of a banner which has a symbolic reference which creates a sense of unity, <coughs> but within a, a certain kind of a community, within a certain kind of a tribe, a grouping. And if we go, let's say, <coughs> with the tribal, and then to the grouping of there were four tribes together, on, uh, that three tribes together on four, then in fact, we, what we have is coming from the individual to a larger group, to a larger group, to a larger group, and all together they formulate a national, a national presence, but it's made up of certain kind of an expression of identity from the particular getting more generalized, more generalized, and connecting to, to Am Yisrael on a collective national basis, but coming from the nucleus of the particularity of a yochid, and then moving in concentric circles to a larger grouping. It does seem consistent with the idea that the, the yochid as a yochid has a presence, has an identity, has a certain kind of contribution to make as an individual. And he has to bring mea koach alapol from the potential to give expression, to articulate that which is his potential, but it will be enhanced and it will echo and create more reverberations when it's done in a manner moving from the center of the, the nucleus of the, of, the, of the cell to the outer, to the outer, to the outer. But it needs that connection to the larger grouping. The Chavetz Chaim points out that the that the Machina Levia, where the Oren was and the the Luchos, that was that was at the center. It was at the center because the Klal the different tribes, the different groupings, whichever way we're going to define them and describe them, they had to be equidistant from that, from the own, and access of the hashpo that they would receive from that, that energy of the, of the own, which is peak Kedusha. 
Similarly, says the Chofetz Chaim, the, the Bima in our, uh, in our Bote Knesiot are always at the center, towards the center, that the Kahal, whether it's the Mizrach or the Mayriv, or whichever, whichever portion of the Tzibur should have a, a certain level of proximity and access to the centrality of the Torah and that's symbolic in our lives. The idea of symbol, Bechlal, the idea of symbol is that a human being has a, a, a tendency and is built that way psychologically, spiritually, spiritually and therefore expresses itself psychologically really, is that the to abstract and to speak a kind of shorthand. All language is a kind of abstraction of feelings, thoughts that we capsulize and limit into choosing language, choosing a certain kind of diction, syntax, a certain particular language. The core language of the Bria, as we find in the in Chazal in the Mafalshim, that the Bria was created with Loshana Kedish, and Loshana Kedish then has a certain uniqueness. It's not merely by consensus, it's not merely descriptivist, as the as we try and connect a word to a thing or to an idea. It's prescriptive. It's, 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 there's an actual inherent relationship between Loshin Kodesh and what is being described. The Degel, then, is a, is a reference point. It's a symbol. It's a, a shorthand for for a certain kind of connection. The Radak talks about the idea that the Degel allowed for people from a distance to be able to come to where they had to get because it was on high. It was on high. The, the Degel is also, there was a ness, a, a flag, which was on high and was a point of gathering for seeing it even from a distance. He even makes the extension that in Loshen Kodesh, the Gimel and the Kuf are interchangeable for certain kinds of commentary and insights. And therefore, Degel can also be read as Dekel, which is the, the, that high palm tree that but tends to grow very, very high. And so the, the Degel had a certain, that's the way we respond, the shorthand, the seeing the flag. It creates a certain kind of a inspiration, identification, and sense of com camaraderie with the, the grouping that's there. And it goes in concentric circles, from the Shevet to the larger grouping of a few Shvatim to Klal Yisrael, Klalu Klal. And it's the history. It's the connecting all the way through. There's a uh, pamphlet that I have here. Pamphlet was authored by Rabbi Yamin Schwartzman, Zechet Tzalek Levrocha, who's a Rav in Chesnik in, in Russia, the father of Rebel Schwartzman. Tzatzal, the Rosh Yeshiva in when Osamech was founded, the Rosh Yeshiva's, the Rosh Yeshiva's Rosh Yeshiva, my Rosh Yeshiva. He gave me this, this was, uh, uh, he thought we may have use for it, um, for the Bochum. It's a very, very poignant piece. And he making, a, it was written 96 years ago. 96 years ago. So 
before the country was established, but there was a there was a ruach, a spirit of building the country, and he's basically trying to encourage the inhabitants of Eretzisol then before Koma Medina that were moving so much to the left and becoming acculturated with British culture and the, what many had brought from Eastern Europe and tried to rid themselves of the ghetto image and the playing soccer on Shabbos and violating the Shabbos in various ways. And he's giving, he's giving Teichocha, but he's giving it in, a, in an inspirational way. It's a very touching, touching piece. But in here, he has, he daushans, he brings a medush, medush in, on Shira Shirim. And the medush in Shira Shirim says, don't read it in Shira Shirim, diglu or lai ahavo, to embrace me, cover me, clothe me, symbolically, actually, diglo alai avo, read it dilgo. Dilgo means to skip, to jump. That sometimes this flag, which represents triumph, win a war, march with the flag on high, that everybody can, all around the throngs can gather to participate in the parade of, uh, of triumph. And that's Klan Yisrael in history has their degel, diglu or lai ava, it will be the ava of Klan Yisrael will be a kind of invisible degel in history, that when we have to try and understand why are we here in El Tisal? Why do we have the right to expect that people should recognize that there's a historic continuity here and that the nations that are around us and the Jews that are here that want to undo the, the continuity of that history in its observance of mitzvahs, and that are wanted to be a country like all countries. That, because there's an invisible degel that we carry. The improbability of our survival that was predicted, anticipated in the Torah, in Chazal, Vishenim, Achreinim, all through history. As Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes in his Siddur, that we've often quoted that the improbability of our survival and return back to El Yisrael, even if it wasn't predicted, would be a phenomenon, let alone that it was predicted and that we are in fact here. This se'echod, one lamb, surrounded by 70 wolves. And here we are. Chazal talk about it. Rabbi Yenison talks about it. And Rabbi Yaakov Emden talks about it. And so, there's an invisible degel. This phenomenon, that's our degel. That's diglolai ahava. Our ahava has allowed, empowered us to transcend all of those norms that govern other people in history. But sometimes it's dilgu. They're, it's ripped. It's tattered, that banner. The banner, we're suffering. We're being persecuted. It's a tattered banner, a tattered flag, a ripped flag. But that in itself is the flag that we fly on high that though it's tattered, though it's ripped, though it's split, 
Yes. Diglu olai avo, though it was in fact, though it was in fact not the ideal plan that could have been, because individually and collectively we always had prira and always have prira to how we are going to deal with whatever challenges are put in front of us. The Ramban, others, talk about the peculiarity that the number of the population of Shevet Levi was much less, they reproduced much less proportionally to the, to the other tribes. That a number of reasons are given by Rishenim and through the years and Achrenim. But one of the reasons that the Ramban gives is that they were freed of the Shibud in, in Mitzrayim. And because they didn't suffer the Shibud, they didn't suffer that enslavement in Mitzrayim, then the special brocha and the ness of the increase of the population in Mitzrayim was in direct proportion to the challenge and the pain and the suffering that they had in Mitzrayim. And the brocha came as a result of that. And so, here again, the, the diglu alai ahava is like the Mephoshim say, it's brought la halocha. Somebody has a, a revav. Tamut Chochem shouldn't have a stain on his clothes. But what happened to Shabbos? He's got one Shabbos suit and he spills something on it. So here now, the, the kesem, that revav, that stain, that is the covered Shabbos. That becomes the covered Shabbos. That, that, that stain, that blemish that seems to be there, that, that is there, and that that becomes the covered Shabbos because now in my subordinating my reflex response to want to get rid of it and controlling myself and I'm elevating myself to a, a level of beyond the normal reaction of what, how people would respond. It's inappropriate, yes, but that inappropriateness is because that now becomes what is appropriate. Diglu alayava, dilgo alayava. But one can also read, I would suggest, that the word diglu is ligdol, to grow. Rearrange the oasis. Rearrange the, the lettering. That is how growth takes place, by being challenged, by being threatened, then we, we have to rise to the occasion. We've often talked about the, to build the material world, our physiology is symbolic of spiritual essences and realities. Lift this card a thousand times, it's not going to do much for my muscles. But if I lift something that has resistance, that is being pulled gravitationally to the ground, then I, I grow. I'm putting muscles on my neshama. That is the challenge. Do we go looking for challenges? We don't create artificial challenges. We try and reduce the external pressures and we deal with the limeratera, supporting limeratera, the growth in, that comes, that gidul, 
that will help facilitate and bring about the degel of despite a time of, of dilgul, of tattered, of tattered flags. That is the, the nature of, of how we, how a Jew has to relate to the world. Does he recognize that he as a yochid needs a sense of self-identity, of self-fulfillment? Yeah, of course. And that's why I work from the center of the circle to the, to the outer rim of the, of the circle. Our initial starting point is coming back to the idea that we recite a bracha every morning, vehinom, Hashem elokeinu, that the that it should be. Uh, we ask for pleasantness in our doing of mitzvahs uh, every evening, and we also ask for enjoying, enjoying the, taking pleasure from limud Torah. Varevno, Hashem elokeinu, aleinu, val kolam chor beisesov, tzetzenu, tzetzeni. Want to take pleasure from learning. The obvious question is that mitzvahs lav lahenes netnu, mitzvahs the were not given to to enjoy. Mitzvahs were given to to expedite, and that schar mitzvah b'hayal malema leko. It's the pkudah from the melech. Obviously, if I can enjoy a mitzvah or uh, or fulfill a mitzvah, then the uh, then in a way that it's uh, pleasant. But here I'm asking the Chathila that it should be uh, pleasurable, this mitzvah. Why? Why dafka by the mitzvah of Lima Ratera? And Shevet Levi were dedicated to Lima Ratera and that symbol that the Chavetz Chaim brought, that it was the, at the center, it should be at the core and always reminded but, and we're asking for, yet for individual, personal kind of a, of a pleasure. So, we've mentioned it in the past, is that the, we ask of this mitzvah, of Limer Atera, something we don't require of other mitzvahs, and that is that the, it should displace and replace the Yetzirah. Barasi Yetzirah, Barasi Tavlin, the antidote to to counterbalance the uh, the the So we're asking the Belgium, help us, help us make it happen, give us pleasure in the limit of Torah. But it seems to be another dimension involved, is that Vaharevno can also be read as becoming a guarantor, Orev is a guarantor on a on an obligation. That Shimon is trying to take a loan from Ruvain, and Ruvain says, bring me Levi as a guarantor, and I'll, I'll give you the loan. Gemara and Kedushan asks, then how can Levi obligate himself? The laws of halachic transaction require that before somebody can obligate himself, he must get something in return. Says the Gemara and Kedushan, Levi has the satisfaction he has the pleasure that Ruvain would not have executed the loan without Levi taking it. Shimon got the loan because Levi took responsibility as a guarantor. So, Bahahi Hano, with that Hano, I would submit that the, you want to be a guarantor to pass it on to the next generation, you want to be committed to giving it over to your children, to cry yourself, to your Talmidim. If you have hano, bahahi hano, you have pleasure from your limud Torah, then you can be the transmitter of it to another generation. You have nemonis, you have, you have credibility. Shevet Levi, in Mitzrayim, one of the reasons that submitted is that they were more removed from the, from the world 
of the material. And therefore, they were more devoted to learning, and therefore, their population was less. Is that recommended for others? No. Benazai went that route legamri, completely, but it's not recommended for others. But there is, does seem to be a correlation between a reduction in the amount of commitment to self-gratification and yet to achieve ruchnias, but not, there has to be a certain kind of pleasure. The pleasure can be abstracted. You can take it to a conduit and direct it for its positive virtues. The Rebbe gives us symbols in the world of things and events and experience. There's, a, there's an idea of center of gravity. There's a holder for a bottle of wine that a dear friend gave me as a gift. You stand it, try and stand it, it doesn't stand. The gravitational force, the center of gravity is not lined up right. You put in a bottle to hold it, you take responsibility to hold, to share, to give over. You're carrying a burden of others, of family, of Klal that will give you the balance, the ability to stand. When we take a little bit, we're still too close to completely digest the sequence of events that have shaken the world, our world. COVID, Meron, missiles falling around the country. Seems to be something strange about the difference in the reaction of so many Israelis, my brethren, is that when missiles were only falling in the Negev, only falling in communities in the Dorum, it wasn't such a great violation. The real breach is Yerushalayim, and even more real, the center of secular culture in Tel Aviv. That's, that's a no-no. Something strange about that. And it, it communicates something about where we're at and what has to be done. Is that we have to do what Rabbi Yaman Schwartzman Zatzal was, was reaching out to do, to, to touch, inspire our brethren. We're living in a time of dilgu. It's not so much diglu. It's a tattered banner that, that's on high. Have massive, wonderful accomplishments been achieved by the initiators and founders of this, of this unique country in the Middle East? Yeah, that's, that's why many of my friends and myself eventually said we want to bring up our families here because this is, this is where it's at. The future of Am Yisrael. Klal Yisrael, in El Yisrael. And we have, as Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, Zatzal told us, the Mira Shiva, we must have extraordinary gratitude to those who we're counting on to do the Hishtadlus militarily, in many cases risking life and limb. That's the Hishtadlus. The Rebbein Shalom is going to decide. Yeah, but we live in a world of Hishtadlus when we're obligated to do Hishtadlus. Does that mean, Chas Shalom that we should close the Gemara? No. But it means that we have to have 
HaKol Satov recognition and gratitude to those that are doing what they were trained and positioned to do. And so, as we try and try and mend, we try and sow the rent, the rips, in the tattered banner, and reaffirm that there is an invisible banner, diglu alai ava, the ava should give us the capacity to embrace. Surely this is what we should learn from the COVID, from Iran, from the missiles that are falling, that we are one. Yes, we have our individual groupings, our individual tribes, our uniqueness, and that's precious and it should be that way. But we're part of an Am Yisrael, and that Am Yisrael, when all of the, the Golem come together, that's the quote Shemayim, the Kiddush Hashem, that Bemheira Biyamenu, we should see Mashiach, Sit Kenyon.